What? Hmm. Let's try again. Oy. And we're back, and I'm made of 98% mashed potatoes now. I hope that you had a lovely time with your friends, your family, your chosen family, whoever you spent the holiday with, if you celebrate it, and even if you don't, I want to let you know that I'm really thankful for you. Thank you for watching and spending some time with me here on YouTube or wherever you happen to be finding me. Now this week I picked up Witchfinder from the man, the myth, the legend, Mike Mignola, but it was also co-written by a Portland guy, Chris Roberson, which was very cool. And I also picked up Gloriana from Kevin Heisinga. That is the last name I practiced pronouncing. But this was a recommendation from Jonathan Hill, and if you don't know Jonathan Hill, he's a friend of the show. He teaches at an art school here in Portland, and he's also a very talented cartoonist. We reviewed one of his comics that he did with M.K. Reed, who is a very talented writer that's also based here in Portland. And when Jonathan Hill said that this was an inspiration to him and he really enjoyed his work, well, I couldn't ignore that, and I can see why. And I spent a long time looking at these two comics thinking, what's the common thread that ties them together? So I could say something like, and this week's theme is, I got nothing. So without further ado, let's talk comics. Now we're going to start with Gloriana because I have a lot to say about it. These are slice of life comics about a, a character named Glenn Ganges and he's an oddball, I would say. But you know, when you say slice of life, sometimes people think maybe mundane, but these really stick with you. I've been thinking about this comic since I read it, and I think a lot of it has to do with just like the sheer amount of work that had to have gone into this comic. The comics are very short, but there's just so much inside of them. I'm confused. It's like when you walk into a room and it's bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside. That's what happened here in my little brain. It's just like, what? You're really at the whim of Glenn as he is the narrator and you're kind of seeing how he interprets the world, which is always really cool to sort of step into somebody else's shoes, whether they be fictional or not. It makes you a better person, in my opinion. But you're definitely at the whim of his fantasies and his ideas and I don't know, there's something about him that's just like a little bit strange and you'll be sucked into a fantasy and then realize that the reality is kind of different, but not in that like the main character was all a dream, like not really like that. You just it's really relatable, where you just find yourself sort of, oh, sorry, I was just thinking about whatever. I don't know, it was just a really artful way to like, I don't know, show humanness in these short comics about one guy. But it does a really good job of breaking down complex sort of emotions and basic human like wants and needs that we all have, but sort of from this character's perspective. And uh, I don't know, it just, it left me with like sort of a feeling of like, melancholy but not in a bad way. You know when you like listen to sad music on purpose? Sometimes I break out the bright eyes and I'm just a little sad by myself, but I'm not upset about it. I, I did it to myself. I would sign up to read this comic book over and over again because that sort of, I don't know, that emotional connection was just really there. I thought this was a really great comic and I would recommend it to you if you haven't read it. Um, when I picked it up at Floating World Comics located at 400 Northwest Good Street, um, I really do go there every week. I know I like make a joke about like plugging them, but I think they're such a great comic shop. Um, when I went in there and I picked this comic up because I was like on a mission because Jonathan had recommended it to me and I was gonna get it. Uh, Wally, who works there, who's super sweet, was like, "Wow, this is a great comic. This is like one of those comics that like when people bring it to the front, you're like, why aren't more people buying this comic? And now I can share that sentiment with him. Why aren't more people reading this comic? That's not to say that it hasn't been extremely popular. It has a lot of really great reviews and uh, tons of people have read it. He just means more like, make this comic book creator a, a normal part of your repertoire and I can't agree more. Um, I would really recommend this comic. That's three people that recommend it now. It's Wally, it's me, and it's Jonathan Hill. So what are you waiting for? No, seriously, what are you waiting for? Read it and then tweet me so we can talk about it because I like can't stop thinking about it. Okay, thanks. And the next comic we're going to talk about is Witchfinder. Now this is a from the world of Hellboy sort of book, so it's in the Hellboy realm of things. But it is about Sir Edward Grey, who investigates the occult. You had me there. And then it's also, like I said, co-written by Mike Mignola and also Chris Roberson, who is a Portland local uh, who creates comics. And uh, so I think that's so cool. And this was a really cool comic. It deals with um, a new twist on Jack the Ripper, which of course is always super interesting to me. If you don't know, I also um, do investigative reporting on crime. 
I have a true crime podcast out called Urge to Kill that I helped produce and edit. Um, I'm very into true crime, that's what my background is, so I'm always really interested in stuff like that and I love the new take on it. So, so the idea is that uh, Jack the Ripper is terrorizing 19th century England and Sir Edward Grey has been brought in because he thinks that these are occult ritual killings and he knows who did it. And I just think that it's really cool, so it definitely has that sort of macabre edge which I love and which is why I really dug this comic and I think a lot of people who read like Hellboy comics uh, sort of have that interest so uh, this is right in the same vein there uh, I just think it's really cool to sort of look back at historical events like that like we saw that in the Batman comic that we reviewed last week where we look at historical events and sort of uh, change the lens with which we look at them through that's English um, uh, to have a different understanding of them. And I, I think that's really interesting. So I thought that this was really cool. It leaves you on a very serious cliffhanger. Um, so if you pick up the first one, you'll be hooked, probably like me, um, and you'll wanna pick up the second. So I really enjoyed this comic. And I'll be honest, like I like Hellboy and I've read a handful of Hellboy comics, but I'm not like, I don't know a lot about uh, like anything really, but I don't know a lot about Hellboy comics. And so I was like, you know, sort of dipping a toe in the pool, and I really enjoyed it, so I would recommend this comic. And so your takeaway from this video is read Kevin Heisinga, he's very good, and also, uh, you know, join me in creepy um, occult stuff. You know, yeah. It's kind of a short video for you guys this week, because it's a holiday, and I've been busy, and I've been editing that podcast that I was talking about, and. Yeah, so, uh, but I'm really thankful to Jonathan Hill for recommending Gloriana um, because it was great, but also because I always intended for this channel to be collaborative. I wanna know what you guys are reading, what you're loving, what you're hating, what you think I should be reading, what you think I should be hating and loving. Um, and I'm open to all things. I'm a comic book novice for the most part. I know how to read, full stop. And then I get up here and I talk about it kind of like an idiot, full stop. <laughs> But, you know, I want to know what comic I, I've missed out on because, you know, I, um, I, I read what I like, like everybody else, and you guys like different stuff than me. So just let me know. Um, I'm really thankful that he had that recommendation. A few other people popped into the comments, so I'm going to be reading theirs in the weeks coming up. So I'll be doing a recommended book and then probably something new off the shelf. So if you want to recommend me a book, you can tweet me. I'm on Twitter. I post pictures of my dog. He's very cute. That's my pitch for following me on Twitter. I also post like a lot about Baby Yoda right now. I'm really sorry. I, I can't get over it. Something has happened to me. I think, I think millennials are obsessed with Baby Yoda because we all know that we probably shouldn't have children because like the world is ending. But I don't want to think about it that hard. I just, oh, it's a little frowny mouth. He's so cute. Okay, I've gotten off base. Thank you so much for joining me this week. <laughs> sorry if you never want to join me again for another week. I'm a little over caffeinated. Um, but I will see you guys next week, same-ish time, same place. And until then, this has been KGW's Comic Pick of the Week. Look at this little port up here.